Hello and welcome to this tutorial on the ultrasonic signatures of cavitating bubbles. Within this tutorial, when we refer to ultrasonic cavitation, we're talking about the interaction of bubbles with ultrasonic waves. Ultrasonic cavitation can be loosely characterized into two categories. Non-inertial cavitation, which often occurs at lower pressure levels and involves shape changes no collapse of a bubble, and then inertial cavitation, which often occurs at higher pressure amplitudes where there is a violent bubble collapse. We'll discuss both of these types of cavitation in this tutorial. Beginning with non-inertial cavitation, we're looking at the response of a bubble to an external ultrasonic wave. And this could be the simple expansion and contraction in response to the compression and tensional phases. Interactions with ultrasonic waves could also cause shape changes. So here we could see a bubble oscillating backwards and forwards between an ellipsoidal and a spherical shape. But more complex shapes with higher modal orders are also possible. We could be also looking at the changes on the surface of the bubble and seeing an oscillation that propagates around the circumference of the bubble. Let's consider the acoustic emissions that we might see from an acoustically driven bubble. If we're driving the bubble at a fundamental frequency F0, we'll clearly expect to see that signature and there will be some degree of spectral bandwidth either side, as shown on the diagram. The first feature we'd expect to see from a cavitating bubble would be other spectral peaks at harmonics, integer harmonics of the fundamental, and the second and third harmonics are shown on screen in red. We may also see subharmonics, so these are integer divisors on the fundamental. But to further complicate matters, we could also see ultraharmonics, which are integer multiples of subharmonics. Clearly, some of these can be coincident with other spectral features. So the 2f0 over 2 is going to be coincident with the fundamental, and the 4f0 over 2 would be coincident with the second harmonic. Let's also consider what happens if we start with the f0 over 3, and here we can see the ultra harmonics that extend upwards from that as well. This means that the cavitation spectrum from non-inertial cavitation contain many, many spectral peaks. In this particular example, we can see our fundamental and the second, third and fourth harmonics are all visible. But we also have 3F0, 5F0 and 7F0 over 2. And we can even see the F0 over 4 subharmonic. So to summarise then, when we're looking at non-inertial cavitation, we could see harmonics at integer multiples of the fundamental, subharmonics that are integer divisors of the fundamental, ultraharmonics, which are integer multiples of subharmonics, and any combination of the above. Now let's consider inertial cavitation. As mentioned previously, this tends to occur at higher pressures. And therefore, when we have a higher tensional phase, we can get to a point where the external forces looking to compress a bubble are greater than the internal forces maintaining its shape. This tends to lead to a bubble which is starting to buckle at its outer surface. Once buckling happens, the inertia of the water outside rapidly results in a jetting propagating through. And this jetting can cause considerable damage to any surface that may be behind it, as it can be moving very fast indeed, often hundreds of metres a second. Cavitation damage is therefore a significant issue. If we look at a standard propeller here, we can see a number of vortices shedding from the tips of the propeller. Now in these situations, 
the shearing forces through the water caused by the propeller's motion are what's inducing the tensional phase in bubbles and not ultrasonically. But nonetheless, it illustrates the point well. Whilst this looks elegant and a pretty spiral, when we examine the leading and trailing edges of propellers that have been subject to cavitation damage, we can see that the stainless steel here is considerably pitted as a result of the water jets arising from those collapsing bubbles. Cavitation damage is therefore really destructive. Let's look at the cavitation spectra that we might see from a collapsing bubble. As the bubble collapses, we can end up with a very, very broadband signature. But often the spectral amplitude is quite low. These are quite small acoustic signals and spread over a broad frequency range. As mentioned, we will have inertial cavitation at higher pressure levels, but we may also have non-inertial cavitation occurring as well. So for full cavitation spectra, we may see the spectral peaks which we've come to learn are the non-inertial signatures, and then a change in the overall baseline responding from the collapsing bubbles. And these spectral features won't be constant. They'll be randomly changing as each bubble grows, evolves, changes its shape, oscillates, and potentially collapses. So we have a time variant signature, and this is an example of the frequency at one snapshot of that. Clearly, in this situation, it's very difficult to separate the different contributions that we may be looking for. So, to summarise our cavitation discussions, we know that non-inertial and inertial cavitation events have very different acoustic emissions. And cavitation signatures may have very small amplitude, but be of very broad bandwidth. We hope you found this tutorial interesting. If you did, please come back and find some more of the PA tutorial videos.